Uh, call the IMHS board meeting for February 21st, 2013 to order at 7 or 6.37 p.m. IMHS serves animals and people by offering programs that promote animal health and responsible pet stewardship and foster compassion towards animals. I'd like to start with a moment of silence. Um, we had a euthanized Hannah this past month. The meeting minutes for January were approved by the board on February 16th. And the business update um, notes, on January 21st, the board approved spending up to $500 for the next newsletter, uh, which was the one, did you already mail that one out, Margaret? Um, no, it has, um, it's at print, okay. officially. Cool. On January 24th, Mary Sosbeck, uh -huh. thank you, <laughs> was elected to the Board of Directors. On January 24th, the 10th board seat was also added by a majority vote. On January 26th, J.J. Sackett was elected to the Board of Directors. And on February 12th, Wendy Kelsey Newman resigned from the Board of Directors as Treasurer. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Marta for shelter director report. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so um, I'm going to start with the shelter stats for the month of January. Um, our total intake number was 63. Total number of adoptions, 44. Um, died is euthanized. That was Hannah. And two animals were transferred. Does anybody have any questions on the stats? All right, moving right along. All right, I am going to hit highlights. This has been a very, very busy month. Um, still buried under this mailing, but determined to get it out tomorrow. Um, if I can get it to the post office before 3, it's going out. And um, I think I'm on track for that right now. Um, Megan Selke was hired to do this edition of the newsletter. Um, we negotiated her down to $400 on that. And a um, key question that I have at this point, um, we had discussed in the last board meeting purchasing the software, which is called InDesign, to do um, the newsletter. JJ has taken the initiative on getting a 30-day trial of the software. Um, and we discussed um, that it might be most cost feasible for us moving forward to actually go ahead and purchase the software if we think it's a successful product to work with and then maybe try to recruit more people who are willing to do the newsletter as well so that um, it's not just one person who it's being delegated to um, but JJ has kindly agreed to work on the summer edition of the newsletter for us. Um, my question is should we move forward on purchasing the software and I guess the first thing that we need is feedback from JJ on how the 30-day trial went. Actually, because I haven't used it, I've just looked at it, my 30 days hasn't started. Good. So wow. if I can get what we need from Megan um, to play around with, then I'll I still have, have 30 days. I have an email days. from her that I need to forward to you today. So um, the cost of the software, though, was it $600? Sorry, I've forgotten. Okay. I an email. It was between 5 and 7 I remember that. Okay. Much. So potentially this is something we could bring up at the next board meeting and discuss whether or not we want to improve the expenditure. Yeah, I'd really actually like to dig in it a little bit before I would yeah. recommend it. Okay. We'll table that topic. <laughs> well, because so, another option, we might be able to switch from InDesign to Publisher or something, too. Which, yeah, I'm not sure which whether it'll be compatible or if we can rebuild it, but yeah, yeah. it's definitely possible. Yeah, so the only problem is I'm not sure the print, print quality will be the same because the printer requires a certain uh, graphic property. You can do that at the Publisher as well. So we so that's a possibility, too. Groups. And if we build that Publisher, that's a start. Mm -hmm. So the good news also is that White Wave will continue to print the newsletters for us, um, which is a, saving us considerable cost, obviously. Um, I have ordered 1,500 copies of the spring edition of the newsletter. It's going to be really pretty. Um, and I'm hoping that they'll turn it around and get it back to us by the end of the first week of March. Sometimes it takes them a few weeks. Um, but really what I wanted to have happen, and I discussed this in the last meeting, was to have the spring appeal go out, and then within 10 days or so, 
have people get hit with our nice newsletter. Um, it'll come at some point after the appeal. Um, there have been some website updates. Um, the next thing on the agenda to get on the website, um, we need to get the Molly Dharma run on there. Um, board biography, um, bios for the new board members. Um, and I will update you at the next meeting about that. We've gotten some really good press in the last month. Um, there's one item that didn't make it on here. Um, Oh, no, it did make it on here. The High Temper Times, I'm not sure who submitted this on our behalf. I'm thinking someone did. It seems like a Lisa Zale kind of thing. Um, somebody submitted our wish list items, and the High Temper Times printed it on the front page of the newspaper mm -hmm. on Wednesday, which was nice. Um, also did a story on our Kaijin sponsorship. Uh, the Flume picked up the Valentine's Day adoption promo and um, also submitted a um, press release about the clinic's one-year anniversary. All right, I'm skipping over um, to shelter operations. Um, we've had ringworm in the shelter. We've, I think, exhausted that issue. Does anybody have any questions about the ringworm cases that we had or what we're doing to treat it or respond to it at all? When was the, I'm just curious, when was the last one that came up as a positive culture? How long has it been? Hannah was the only one that came up as a positive culture in the shelter, right? In the shelter, we, yeah. we had a couple of post-adoption cases from December and January that did come up positive at clinics. Um, two that I'm thinking of, one at Lone Rock and then one at, at Conifer Vet. So. Okay. Um, Marta, I have one thought on that. Which yep. You may have already thought of, but I remember you saying that you were cleaning out things, moving them out of there into another shed or something. I just wondered whether that timing was about right to have triggered it. Maybe there were some residual left in the I don't remember what I was cleaning out. Was I boxing up the 2012 files? Or? It could have been that. I remember you were just getting them out of the shelter to make I space, cleaning back closets. I don't know. Um, so your question really is, could there have been like an environmental contaminant in the shelter that caused the first case? Right. Um, it's possible. It's possible that that could have happened. It's possible that someone could have come into the shelter and been carrying a contaminant on them from a different environment. It's possible that we had a cat that maybe was a carrier. Isn't this possible that could have potentially it's possible spread it? We yeah, don't. it's just this message a long time since the last incident. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's hard to say. We can't pinpoint when it even came in um, because it, it wasn't evident at all until a cat who'd already been a long-term resident in the shelter developed hair loss and you know signs of ringworm. So, um, and again, her culture came up negative. So. It, it looked to us like something else when it when it happened. Marta, I did have a question. Yes. Um, when we had the ops meeting, we talked about two cats who were in the ringworm foster home, Marcus and someone else. And you okay. guys were waiting on cultures for them, and you you were sure that you had seen visible signs of ringworm. I saw yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And they came up negative also? Yeah, so what happened with them, Ellen, is that we cultured those cats, um, but we were recognizing that we were culturing them four days after we had also lime sulfur dipped those cats. Um, so we weren't real surprised that those cultures came up negative. Um, but the plan at this point is to reculture them on March 1st. And, and to not give them any other treatment except just topical treatment for the lesion in the meantime. So that if they truly are positive, we hope to see it on the next culture. Um, all right. Um, on the same topic of ringworm, our landlord called. <laughs> and other tenants don't like the smell of lime sulfur any more than we do. Um, and he is um, graciously offering an option of donating a camper or trailer to the shelter um, that we could use as a mini um, off-site dipping station. Um, it's less convenient for us, obviously, to carry cats out and dip them um, outside the shelter in a camper or a trailer. However, it might solve the problem of the fumes that are bothering the other tenants in the building. Um, I've made it very clear to him that if this is um, a trailer or a camper that's not heated, we will not be using it in the winter to dip cats. Um, and he says that he has the option of dropping a line to get electricity in it um, or to get some kind of heat in it for us. 
Um, regardless, how do we feel about um, accepting a donated trailer or camper from the landlord and or asking <clears throat> for one from the community? I can share with you that um, two years ago when the cats were put down in January, mm -hmm. the group of people that were trying to pull together and looking at options and working first with the staff and mm -hmm. with the board, that was basically our top priority, I thought, was the possibility of the community donating a um, some kind of a, a camper or trailer or something that could be stripped down, cleaned, um, you know, easily screen, uh, cleaned, and then used for whatever we needed, dipping right. or to keep, it was before the surgical suite, you know, idea, but to keep the um, animals, if we had to, it was going to have to be heated and everything, but right. keep them in isolation. So okay. I know that it was something that we examined, and personally, I was in support of it. I didn't, okay. you know, I, I think we just needed to make sure we fed it out with staff and right. the board. So there's not an insurance issue here that we need to take into consideration. I mean, if it's donated to the shelter um, as a gift, then... I mean, it's probably not going to really be moving, would it? Wouldn't it be pretty stable? It would be stationary. Um, and I don't... I'm not crazy about the idea of having another separate area that we have to maintain, but if it's just a little small space where you can go in, set some cat carriers down, have a dipping station set up, dip, and leave, it will aerate itself, and right. it will solve the, the, the problem, which is a pretty pressing problem right. of other tenants in the building being very frustrated, one of whom is threatening to... Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you want the space, I know. How is the smell? I don't want to run people off. <laughs> um, How is the smell getting to the other uh, facilities? Is it through the venting? Is it just that overwhelming? Is it, it is really that overwhelming. Okay. It's, it's, it's an overwhelming rotten egg building. smell. Okay. It's pretty offensive. So where would the camper trailer be to avoid that? Well, so no, if it's the to... size of trailer that um, the landlord suggested donating to us, um, we talked about, we went outside and looked at all the areas outside, and he suggested that we put it way behind the other tenant's building, um, which would keep it from being an eyesore, but I'm not crazy about the idea of schlepping animals back and forth across a courtyard, mm -hmm. um, especially if they're wet. Um, so I would prefer it to be as close to the shelter doors as possible. Um, there's an area where Wendy used to always park her truck, if mm -hmm. everyone is remembering that area, kind of where there's some trees and then a dumpster. It wouldn't block the dumpster, but we've, we think it'll fit really nicely there. Would so. that help with the smell, though? I mean, as far as that's pretty close well, to that. We think it's far enough away from the building. It doesn't just get trapped in the walls anymore. I mean, okay. an offensive odor can pass by any time from outside, but at least it's not trapped inside the walls. So I think it would be a much more livable situation for the other tenants. It might be worse for uh, the person doing the dipping, though, because it's yeah. no, just oh, a confined it, space. We can ventilate the trailer, too. But then it'll go right next to the building. It'll, it'll go what? where? Right back to the building, maybe. Well, it's not going to be any sense. worse than, I mean, it'll, it'll be an improvement be over what it is now. A, a shed I mean, would do we don't like serve the same either. purpose. A shed? It, it, <clears throat> as a trailer that's not going to move anyway and possibly cost less because what you're paying for in the trailer is the undercarriage. Mm -hmm. If uh, It just has to be four walls and a roof of any kind. And it has to be lit. And it has to be warm. How will you ventilate? If we're using it in the winter. What's that, Kathy? How will you ventilate it? Um, it has windows in it. But if you open windows in the winter, then it's going to be cold in there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'd probably ventilate it after you do the I dipping. I just yeah. don't think yeah, it's that practical be... to use it in the winter. I'm not crazy about the idea of carrying wet cats, even a few steps. Well, I think we'd have to have a way to warm them when they're wet to bring them back in. Right. You know, I mean, we could you like, know, throw a towel blankets. over every carrier and rush them back in. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, the thing has got to be heated. And even if we ventilate, you're right. I mean, that's that's a very valid point. Yeah. We might be just cranking up some heat, opening some windows. <laughs> I mean, do we have any other Unless options? anybody has an alternate it's suggestion, which I'm completely legal. open to. I, I, I wasn't sure how I felt about this idea when he proposed it and wanted to just bounce it off everybody to see if there was any consideration that I you know, wasn't thinking of. Um, I don't know if we have to get it registered if it's a trailer but not going to be out on the road. I don't uh -huh. know if those... <clears throat> you have to put it in storage if it's not going to be licensed and registered. So you have to do something 
What room do we currently you can't just let it sit there without a license. Okay. Either the, the bathroom storage. that's right off the cat room storage or the no kennel room if there are no dogs in the kennel room. Because I'm wondering if we can look into some sort of like air purifier. And we've done this clinic before too. Slash. And no matter where we do it, it's offensive. <laughs> just Ooh, that's what I was well, thinking. Well, like, I'm wondering if we can figure out if there's some sort of like indoor exhaust type of thing that we could maybe put in the same room that you're using, which would... Like a hurricane fan. Well, my suggestion is let's ask the landlord if he could maybe have someone take a look at the ventilation system and see if there's a different approach that would take it out instead of up. Yeah, I mean, that bathroom's on the front side of the building. I mean, hurricane do, fan. Is that like an attic fan? Uh, it's just a really super industrial strength powered yeah. fan. I mean, that'll make it really windy in there. But maybe that would be more effective. I, I think that, you know, I once you, you pour the, the lime sulfur the dip into the gallon of water, it mm -hmm. immediately you can smell it all over rotten so, eggs. Okay. It's pretty bad. It's like, it's like, yeah. well, what do you I, do? I have a question on if we use the trailer and then it's dipping, um, would it sink outside? Are we going to get sure. a complaint? I just want to make sure that's not going to turn into an issue. Complaints from who? The guy that rents the cabin? Uh, I don't that's blowing right on him. I don't really know that it's going to be that much worse than what we're already doing. Not if it's clear over on the south side there. It wouldn't be going toward. No, that but I'm cabin. talking about the, the people that rent that. It sounds like we want to stall this topic a little. So. Why don't we just stall? Isn't there some kind of machine that puts the air in, like for cigarette smokers that pull Right, well that's what I was kind of curious. Would they pull the smell also, I wonder? If maybe there might be like a deodorizer filter kind of thing. Well, we've got the Heavy HEPA filters duty. there already. And I guess yeah, that's yeah and they don't touch nothing. this issue. Yeah, yeah. This is just too much. They purify that smelly air. <laughs> do you think, that, I mean, do, knowing the landlord, do you think he could come up, I mean, would he know about some of these ideas, or do you think he's going to? Why don't I Happy email the landlord and bounce some alternative suggestions off of him, and then why don't we table this topic for next month? But if he's going to loan it to us, and he's the one that gives it to us, I guess it's worth, you can just try it and see if it works. And, and in the, the trailer? Yeah. yeah. In the meantime, if anyone's got time to he jump wants online. Us, and yeah, he's requesting first that we ask the community for a donated trailer. I, I think I'm uncomfortable with this right now. Yeah. Well, let's let it take a look for more discussion to okay. see if, in the meantime, somebody has a different idea. Yeah. And if, anybody, can even if everyone could just think on it for the next few weeks, yeah. that would be good. Well, and Dave and Kathy, I don't know, since you guys actually work in vet clinics, if, there, if there's some sort of filtration or exhaust type of system that, I don't know, somebody... Not for this, you know. No, it like, stinks. And it stinks to high heaven, and there's no way around it, period. As far as I know. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, we're only using it because it's necessary. <laughs> right. The only other alternative that I can think of is to use the kind of, you know, the, um, the, the ringworm shampoos, but yeah. they're a lot more expensive. Uh, uh, well, they're, they're really not too expensive, but you have to leave it on them for 10 minutes. That's the only issue I have yeah. with that. So we had a single yeah, it case a, of... It isn't a real good alternative. There isn't that much advantage to yeah. it other than the smell, which may be enough of an advantage to go to just the shampoos. Well, is the shampoo a good case for when you do the limited, you know, when you have intake? Yeah, we actually did use that as an alternative okay. last week. We had some kittens that came back from foster care who we determined had potentially been exposed. They'd been in the shelter before, and we just malisette shampooed them, and we left it on for 10 minutes. I mean, you really have to time it. It has to be on for 10 minutes, or wow. it's not effective as an antifungal. Um, I, I hate cats having to go through lime sulfur dip, but I also hate having them to have something, shampoo sit on them for mm -hmm. 10 minutes and have us try to restrain them for that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's odorless. So um, maybe we use a combination of these things while we try to figure it out. Um, yeah, if you want to just let the landlord know that we're looking into what our options are, um, I'm going to revisit it. All right. Um, one other operational thing that I wanted to mention with regard to the building, 
Um, the dryer's been on the fritz a bit lately. Um, we went through a patch, about, uh, about a two-week rough patch, where we had to push the start button and the power button off and on literally about 10 times to get the dryer to come on. Um, that problem solved itself miraculously. Um, then it really stopped heating altogether. Last Saturday, we ended up sending one of our workers to a laundromat with change from petty oh. cash to dry everything. Um, mm -hmm. Nicole was able to get her husband to come to the shelter and sort of disassemble the dryer and mess around with some stuff and put it back together, but he did not diagnose the problem, and he said, mm. I mean, it started working again after that. Um, but it's, um, I want to just put it out there that if anybody knows anyone with handyman skills or that has appliance knowledge, um, it would be nice to have someone swing by who is willing to donate a service call. Um, I did already put it out on 285 Bound and Pine Cam. I just wanted to put that out there. I don't know if you noticed, but you did get a suggestion on 285 bound that it could be the vent. I saw that, yeah. Um, we can only partially get to the vent. I mean, a professional could probably really get to the area that's inside the wall, um, but we still need someone to come out and help with it, I guess, is the point. Um, animal updates. Wanted to mention here that we do have a critically ill cat who came in um, a few days ago. She'd been adopted and um, seemed fine when she was adopted, but within a week of being adopted became gravely ill. Was taken to an emergency clinic um, where the adopter incurred a very large bill um, to have her hospitalized for a couple of days. She did test positive for parvo, which in cats is panleukopenia. Uh, which is highly contagious to other cats, um, and um, causes them to suffer quite a bit. We're trying to pull her through this um, with fluids and medications that Dr. Davis prescribed. How is she doing? She's the same. She's not worse. She's not better. Um, and I'll bring her in on Sunday. Is she vomiting today? Mm-mm. She's not vomiting. Um, She's not eating or drinking, um, but she's not vomiting. Keep her in your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Her name is Shelby. Um, staffing. So Nicole has verbally given her resignation. Um, she's going to cut back her hours in April, and her last working day will be May 31st. Um, I've begun searching for a new shelter supervisor, um, mostly putting the word out among ex-colleagues at this point. Um, and I'm hoping to get someone in and have a period of at least four weeks of overlap between Nicole's departure and um, having to start someone full-time in that role. What is Nicole's cutting back? I know I just found out she recently cut back, I think, to 80% um, yeah. time. But uh, what is she, when she cuts back again, how many? Um, she will drop a day entirely when she cuts back again in April. So it'll be the like plan is for days. her to go to a four-day week. Yeah. Um, right now, she is coming in when the shelter opens on Thursdays, and she's working open to close on Thursdays, as opposed to coming in at 8 o'clock. Um, okay. And I was thinking she had reduced to 32 hours a week already. I thought that's what we just... I think that puts her at about 36 hours, hmm. unless you saw her timesheet. Yeah, well, we were working with it with Wendy on it, and I thought if we had taken her back... 32? Even better. Yeah, I may be wrong, but I okay. thought we were putting in the She's still it. coming in five days a week right now. Okay. And she's doing um, some but she does days. have limited hours um, okay. one of those days. Um, you may have seen something else where perhaps she had a doctor appointment right. or something like that. Be. But um, yeah, I think, she I think that we have her scheduled for about 35 or 36 hours right okay. now. Um, the plan for her is come April 1st to actually drop a day and go to four days a week. Okay. Um, <clears throat> 36 surgeries so far this year in our clinic, and we've had six new volunteers come through orientation in the shelter since the last board meeting. Um, wanted to also ask if we budgeted this year for a formal volunteer party. I know we talked about doing that in April. It is in the budget. No, I don't know. I don't know oh, what okay. she put in the budget for that because she really did 10%, and we really don't have details on the budget either. What, what okay. you see on the summary level is mm -hmm. it. There's nothing more detailed than that. I thought there was, but... 
it does say staff volunteer expenses a hundred dollars but she put it in I think for each month or something right so oh, we could January. use uh, yeah that's just for January I'll see if I have my budget so we okay. probably can use I know we did <clears> put in um, so I, much each month I think you forwarded me the 2013 budget and I, I haven't looked at it yet so the 2013 you, you may have if you did I haven't looked at it yet okay I don't think you're going to see that specific other than there is a okay uh, you're right there's staff volunteers which is in item 28 and I think if I remember right um, there's $1,200 for the year. It was $100 okay. each month. So if we can group it and use it in April. And I know that's what we had planned on doing, and everybody mm -hmm. talked about that. I think we approved it last year okay. and then deferred it till April. So I think that's still in the game plan. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions about my report? I kind of hit highlights. I guess one thing I just wanted to bring up to possibly consider is I know when you came on board, we went from five to seven days a week. And I don't know with Nicole's cutting hours and oh the shelter term. open hours yeah well if it might make sense to take a look at which days we're actually you know if we have days that we don't do adoptions typically that it might make sense to close the shelter one day a week or something to, to possibly help yeah I think we stuff. can I think we can maintain seven days a week although um, I'm reconsidering Wednesday evenings I must tell you <laughs> um, I think that Wednesday evenings might be more successful in the summer um, maybe just seasonally when families are more apt to adopt um, I don't know that I want to go year-round on Wednesday evenings anymore. Uh, I that's probably a good point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I feel good about maintaining um, open hours every day at this point. But yeah, I just didn't know if we could look at records yeah. and say, hey, we never adopt out on Tuesdays. So, you, you know, know, if we... Funny things happen. Sometimes Saturdays are dead and everybody comes in on mm -hmm. Monday. It's bizarre. Mm -hmm. What is up with this? They have been people? <laughs> I know. Um, which is nice. It's great to get slammed on a Monday, you know. Um, so uh, yeah, but we are we are taking a second look at Wednesday evenings, <coughs> even though that's the day that everyone's available to volunteer <laughs> after <laughs> four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> I have one question that's not in your report, but I think you were were spearheading it. The highway sign. Did I? Yeah. So anything happened with that? Yeah, we got the highway sign. Um, oh, we got the highway sign ordered. Um, they like to put those in the ground about April or May when it thaws. Um, we did get a sign that's going to go both ways. Uh, we're, you know, we have the two-way sign. Either way that you're driving up or down the highway, it's a directional it's sign. It's one sign in the shelter. same location. I yeah. think so, Natalie. I think there. I, I don't know how they would justify putting in two different signs, but they did indicate that the location of the sign would be pretty much at the driveway entrance to the shelter. So, because I noticed that the banner was up on the van again. Yes, it is. We have paid for a sign, and we will eventually get ourselves a real sign. And in the meantime, that banner is going to stay right up there where it is. Okay. Natalie's going to be the and uh, I'm okay resident with that. on that, right? She's chain herself to the She's band. a renegade, that one. I'm, she, I'm going to court with, to argue with the person who uh, interprets their rules if it comes to that because I don't agree with his definition. And I, and I, and I think that you're right. And I still haven't figured out what court it goes to, but I'm going to. Yeah, I, I, I think we're within our legal rights to have the banners on the on the van parked in our parking lot. Anything else for Marva? Cool. Fundraising. Start? I got flyers. Yeah, I'll start, and you just supplement wherever. Um, we're going to hand out some exam some of the uh, copies of the flyers. We have finalized our uh, raffle flyers. Uh, we will be making more copies of these. If you guys, we can send you electronically. If some of you want to make your own copies, can hand out when you sell the raffle tickets. Uh, the other good news is we just got our renewal license number, so we can proceed starting tomorrow on the ticket. We basically had already knocked out the format, but we need to drop the number in there and then um, take it to Staples. And I'm very hopeful that I can actually get them assembled back and assembled by Monday morning. So. Starting Monday, we can start selling tickets. Uh, we do have a fundraising meeting on Tuesday evening at 6.30, and you don't have to be a member of the committee to attend those things whatsoever. Uh, right now, I think, I don't know that anybody's confirmed that they're coming. I think everybody, it's just a bad Tuesday night for them. Yeah. So that's okay. Sharon Thompson might show up. You know, I'll deal with 
whomever shows up. Um, and we've got five people, new people, over the last two and a half months that have shown an interest in um, joining, doing volunteer work for the shelter. And one of the areas of interest was fundraising. So we're, <laughs> we're <laughs> might have for the building fund, too. <laughs> so we're going to make personal phone calls tomorrow to them and invite them. And if I have to meet with them to kind of catch them up, especially when we do that. So um, I will send out, probably since we're going to have so many people missing Tuesday, I will send out, I think, electronically the letter and the instructions of how to sell the tickets. Because we are governed by the <coughs> raffle uh, license and the gaming, what is it, department or board, Colorado gaming uh, laws. Secretary of State. Okay. We have to be very careful and compliant with, um, you know, how we're selling the tickets. For instance, you must be a member uh, in good standing in order to be able to sell tickets. You, and must, you must be at least 18 years of age to sell tickets. Um, and the winner of the wine prize will have to be 21. So we actually, on the raffle tickets this year, we have a checkbox for I certify that I'm 21 or older um, that people will have to check off. And then, and that way, if we draw one and it's not checked <coughs> and it's for the wine, then we'll throw it back in and draw another. So. And the <coughs> letters, you guys are, a lot of you are familiar with the letters last year that we signed, but uh, it's similar to that, a little bit more elaborating on some of these details. Um, so we'll have to do the same thing. Just sign out, you'll, uh, and I'll cover this in instructions for the entire board. Even if you don't want to sell tickets, at least you'll have it. Um, and then next Tuesday, and then I'll probably come and talk to you guys at the shelter too about it, and at the thrift store too. And I was going to ask, can you bring that to the meeting Saturday? Yes, I can. I can at least bring the instructions in the letter, and then take orders on how many people want to get tickets to sell, because <laughs> the tickets may not be ready until Sunday or Monday. But yeah, at least I can introduce that and bring some of the um, the flyers with us too. And um, Marta, mm -hmm. I need to find out from you which of our volunteers are members and which aren't to figure out. I can give you the lowdown on that. Okay. Cheryl, did you pay 18 or older to win the wine? 21 or older oh, for winning the wine. Right. Okay. <laughs> no, but because because it's actually gambling, uh -huh. you have to be at least 18 to sell the tickets too. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I know that there was some question on that in the past. So, but because it is actually gambling, you can't even sell tickets unless you're a member of it at least 18 years of age. So the raffle, you know, we're going to be moving on, and then it's going to be the same. We're going to start drawing raffle numbers about an hour into our um, annual members meeting in May. Anything else on raffle? You think? No. Okay. Um, one thing I want a couple of more things I wanted to cover because of the ringworm. Unfortunately, the business cards we've had to throw out at the shelter. Thank you for So that. I'd like to just appeal to, if you guys, you know, Lone Rock, um, I don't think we go till probably March or April, but if you have business cards, we can just drop them off. We definitely want to. I have a few that were in the drawer that I could go ahead and set up. Not Lone Rock, though. But most of, I mean, we, we need about 95% of what we had before. The business cards for the newer people, those were, um, we had, we have a business partnership program with a few people, so we were putting them out for those people, as well as people that met a certain tier of donation for the silent auction last year. We had promised, I think, some level of six months and some were 12 months to exhibit their business cards on um, in the shelter, and Steve had actually donated two of his you know, self-made uh, display boards there. So anyways, we need to try to collect you know, whatever business cards we can. I've already started doing that, keep forgetting crews in. And I'm not going to worry so much about places that really didn't seem, you know, eager. You know, like some of the places that are down in Colorado Springs, I don't think they really care to have it on display. But the, the ones that are local, um, especially the bigger donors, I think we really need to make an effort to get those. So Could we email all our business partners? Because they probably have emails on that on our website that we would like we to can. restock. I think we can on the ones that are true, what started the business partnership program. Mm -hmm. Those I think we can, uh, but those were probably like 10. And they are, you know, they're listed at the bottom, cats, right. pets, and some of those. Right. Uh, we can email them to try to get those too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. I don't, we try to get emails on the others, but I don't know that we have that many. Right. You know what, that's, I, I will email everybody that we have an email address for um, the IMHS Rewards business partners and the people who gave for the silent auction. Anybody we've got email for, I can just say, hey, we're out of your carts, we need more. I can tell you which ones <laughs> I've already collected, just to, that way you don't cover them again. Great, that's and fine. then Cappy, maybe you can bring us Lone Rock carts. Yeah. What was that? Cappy's getting Lone Rock. Good, yeah, de definitely on that. Yeah, so, we sorry really about that, but we had to throw that. 
Yeah, we had to. Yeah, unfortunately, but the, it's needed. Um, it was for the animals. It was for the animals, definitely, uh, and the right thing. The other thing I wanted to let everybody know, and again, um, I think it's being brought up on a couple of uh, committee um, updates, and Marta's already done it, but we were uh, selected for the Molly Dharma run, and um, you're, you're going to probably start seeing, I think you might have sent them out, Marta, but I know that in the shelter and also up in the thrift store, we have the trifolds and the uh, flyers <laughs> for that as well, and we're going to need to help out um, just as a whole group trying to publicize that and bringing in more business so that we can try to achieve or beat what they got last year of $10,000. This yes. is, in my opinion, fairly easy money. I mean, it's a lot lower time and ex expended versus like the silent auction. Um, no, and I, mm -hmm. <laughs> we are going to rock this event. Can I just say that right now? Um, so my, what I want to do is, now that we have the new flyers ahead of getting the new newsletters, we're going to just put that as an insert in the newsletters so that it gets mailed out to oh, everybody awesome. on our Good. list. Good. And then we can bring those when we have four table events right now and maybe a fifth, which I need to ask mm -hmm. you about, uh, for selling raffle tickets. We can bring these, put them in a piece of plastic. Facebook, and have local web bulletin boards, email blast, everything. Especially... Any, Thrift shop. Any motorcycle. Right. Yes. Well, crossroads. You know, I've already touched well, yeah. base on crossroads Ernie, yeah, today. Yeah, we know Ernie's going to help us. Anyone that you awesome. know who's a biker and does runs, talk to them, find out how to advertise with the groups that they might associate with so that we can get the flyers out to them. Um, Facebook, 285, Pine Cam, all that stuff is going to be... Yeah, and we're also, I don't know where the lines are drawn, but I don't think there are lines. Um, we're going to try to, on the fundraising committee, especially with some of these new newer volunteers <coughs> being interested, see if we can't, you know, help out with this initiative too through the fundraising committee, um, helping to resource it. I know the thrift shop wants to make cookies and other things. <laughs> you haven't heard that yet. Make sure your <laughs> bathroom is available. <laughs> Which was a good idea I think, because I can make cookies. I mean, you know, that's the type of thing that a lot of us can do too for refreshments. Oh, so <laughs> I knew that would put you over. So that was the other thing was um, uh, the Molly Dharma run. So that's good news. And we will probably start talking within the next month or so on um, starting to do some prep work for the silent auction so that we don't get jammed with it and we can better space out what we need to do, including asking for some of these items starting in May. I mean, some you have to actually ask for six months in advance. There's a cutoff, celestial seasonings up in Boulder, whatever, places like that. So that's um, what we're hoping to when is start the working auction? on. Silent auction is in October. It's like the 18th, 19th of October. It's usually the third week in October-ish. Okay. Tonight. That's it on the fundraising. Okay. Matt, do you have any updates for grants? Um, okay, I hope you can hear me because I can't hear any of you. Oh. Um, we can. Except for Marla. <laughs> um, but not, not once the report. Uh, we had a grant meeting on January 26th with Marta and Scott and I. Um, we, I think we identified uh, almost almost a dozen um, grants to apply for this year. Wow. Uh, Scott and Marta have hit the ground running, um, working on the narrative that we're going to use for most of them. So we have them in the calendar and we're, we're plugging away. Uh, the Dolly Molly Dharma run. Um, email was sent to us just before we had that meeting, so we, we threw that together real quick right after the grant meeting, and, and that's about all I can. Matt, did you say there was 12 that you were applying for? I did not hear what that she asked if you said 12 grants were being applied for. That is what he said, okay. yeah. It's a, it's a pretty ambitious... 10 or 12, yeah. Okay, great. Good. Excellent. Thanks, Matt. Ellen, do, do you want to give the technical report? Is she still there? I think we lost Ellen? Her. Sorry, I was talking. <laughs> That's all right. Um, um, we, we have copies of the technical report. Do you want to go through it? Uh, yeah, I'll go through it really quick. Um, and if anyone has questions, feel free to stop me. We have the updated adoption application form and ASM. I need to document this. Uh, there was a little issue because I didn't 
didn't realize that it was a mail merge document, so I uploaded a regular Word document, and um, anyway, it would be good if uh, I had instructions so that didn't go awry again. We did successfully recover from the power outage. Um, I'm working on a contact list um, for tech committee and those who help us. Um, Ken has really helped me out here. He seems to uh, know everybody who knows anything. Um, so it would have been... Um, Daryl. No, no, Daryl. faxed over this week. Okay, great. Um, the other thing, Ellen, um, Amy did get the board meeting minutes posted on the website. Oh, great. For the last seven okay. months. We were behind on that. So that's up. Anything for Ellen on the tech committee? Hi. Operations, Dave. Well, Rainworm um, is ongoing, and you know, um, I think Mark covered that in her report. Anna uh, was euthanized. Um, I'm just uh, trying to pinpoint ordering the surgery care. We'll get that narrowed down and get it done. I need to monitor. Kathy, for the new monitor, is that something that we can ask for a donation on, or do you need something specific? Or? What, what kind of monitor? Oh, it's an anesthetic monitor. Um, we, it's we a can, pulse oximeter, basically. But there may be some monies left over from um, the generous donor that supplied monies for the surgery table. It may not cost as much as what was donated. Uh, if it doesn't, then we could ask her uh, if we can use the remainder I would towards love to ask her that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, then that would be awesome. Cool. Yeah. And then if there's, you know, remainder to pick up, if it's a large amount, which I think um, with the cost of the table that I'm looking at, there might be enough to at least pay half for the monitor. Good. Great. So, I mean, that would how, mu how much is a monitor? Um, the one I've been looking at um, is supposed to be better improved um, to pick up, especially in the itty bitties. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably around 700. Oh wow, that's okay. Okay. pretty inexpensive for yeah. a medical device. Is that used okay. or is that new? Oh no, that's brand new. Good. Wow. Yeah, um, used is difficult to find. Most of those, um, you just don't know if they're worth having, if they're functional, yeah. if they're going to break down, so on and so forth. Uh, my big thing is making sure that both items are have decent warranties and that if we need them serviced, we can get it done without having to goof around with it or having them coming out. You know, frankly, a lot of them come out of China and you can't get them serviced, they want you to send it all the way back there. Mm -hmm. So I'm avoiding that because, especially the monitor, it's very important. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's where we're at, getting closer. And you, you, did you say you have it narrowed down to two tables or two? Uh, two companies. Okay. Same and that's new too? Just okay. to see what the warranties are. I think they're both USA made. Um, I think both companies are actually based in Missouri, I believe. So, um, yeah. So I think it's a pretty good deal. So. Uh, 
um, the um, panleukopenia case at this point seems to be isolated to just the one the one cat, but it could, you know, be something that we have to go through kind of like the ringworm. But uh, so far, knock on wood. Yeah, I think. Well, if she had been the, vaccinated. Yeah, yeah. We, all, we always do vaccinate, but um, there was a break in the in the vaccine. I think in her particular case, it was just too much, too too fast. You know, the coming from where she came from, uh, it, she, you know, it was just too much all at once. She was spayed. She was sent down to um, offsite adoption. Cut smart mm -hmm. or one of those, uh, you know, just a lot of stress over a short period of time, um, and I think it just weakened her immune system enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, David. Can you hear what? Is it the parvo case that you're speaking feline of? Feline parvo, yeah, okay. basically. It's panleukopenia. And she could have been exposed prior to vaccination. Mm -hmm. History. So. When was? How long has she been into our system by the time? She came in, I think, on either January 22nd or January 24th. Am I wrong about that? No, or maybe her vaccination was January 24th and she came in. Yeah, she was vaccinated, I think, two days prior to coming in. It was around 24th, okay. 26th. Yeah. Okay. So like a month ago. Yeah. <coughs> Which is real um, unusual. You know, she may have even contacted it, contracted it uh, after she was adopted. The incubation period on viral infections is, generally speaking, three to ten days. Wow. So who knows? Yeah. Where is she at right now? At my says. house. She's with you? Okay. Thank yeah. Marta for being willing to yeah. do that. Wow. Can it be transferred from cats to dogs? No. Um, on a positive note, um, we had a couple of puppies that we transferred from another shelter that had parvovirus in the last month. Um, and we were very successful in keeping it from spreading. We had multiple litters of puppies in the shelter at one time, and we were able to keep that from spreading. Um, I've been in many shelters where if one animal got parvo, it could potentially wipe out a whole row of unvaccinated or vulnerable animals. So We had positive parvo tests on them. I'm not convinced that it was really a, a parvo outbreak because they had been vaccinated. It gets real complicated and confusing real quick because the vaccine company, the, the testing company, the uh, you know, IDEX labs, HESCA, say that uh, vaccination donor does not give you false positives, but most vets that you talk to tell you that it will. So we don't okay. know if it was really parvo or, or just puppies that had been recently vaccinated, which they were. Thank God it's academic because they got yeah. better and, and weren't that sick. Two got sick, but they weren't as sick as this cat, for example. Wow. Um, and they were treated in foster homes. So. Are they okay now or is mm -hmm. it a long Oh, they're doing time? great. Yeah. One thing I would yeah. recommend on the whoever, I don't know who it is, but the donor on the um, surgical table, maybe we should try to do something like an appreciation plaque or something. We'll do something for okay. her. Yeah. Um, and I think this cat, even though she's quite sick, um, she's not as sick as they often get. And if we just take in there, she's going to do all right. I hope so. Uh, but if she doesn't start eating by tomorrow, we'll probably have to start force feeding her. I think you have and force feeding her AD already. Oh, okay. We'll get it time. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. give her, I can only get between three and six cc's at that's a time. That's fine. Do we have that's all you need to, that's I all think she we do, needs. Kathy. Even just that tiny bit does a mountain of good. Okay. And that's it. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. If not, even worse than Finance stuff? Okay. Um, we had our first of two transitioning meetings with uh, Wendy on Tuesday. Tuesday late afternoon and evening. Um, and we have our second one scheduled for just to identify quickly what we need to do. And then we'll start working through how we can try to spread it out. Do we need to hire somebody temporarily, whatever. Um, I've got thoughts on that, but you know, let us 
uh, we're going to start passing some things off. Thank you. Um, Saturday morning at 8 a.m. <laughs> on some. And I, again, I'm looking for initial step. What do we need to do? Then we can look and decide if we're, what our long-term solution is going to be. Whether it's going to be, you know, a couple of volunteers that, you know, work several hours, like how I got started with this, um, or if we hire somebody in or whatever. But we'll be talking more with the board on that. Um, I did learn, or we learned how to, um, Cheryl was there with me, uh, how to run our report to review. And I think I'm probably going to try to put the budget in, um, uh, we've already adopted it at the high level, but I'm going to try to go ahead and put this in QuickBooks within the next two to three months, just so we have some more detail level accounts. I think that would be helpful, maybe not so much this year, but in building for next year. What I found out was the budget's really not in, in it's in Excel, but it's not in QuickBooks. So, so it doesn't roll up into it? You can, it can, but it's not entered. So, and, and really, what you see here, these are the lines that are budgeted. There's no greater detail. So that's why when you asked on your question on the volunteer, it's, you know, there are accounts for that, but, you know, we don't have that in those detailed accounts. So anyways, that's just, you know, more to come on that. If you look at this, I think, um, you know, January is usually a psycho month, not that good for us because we just had the big appeal in December. Um, we didn't really grow the donations as much because we knew that last the year before we had a late appeal go out and a lot of income came in January. This past year it went out early November, mid-November. Um, so we had uh, most of the annual appeal donations were made by December 31st. However, we're still over budget by $1,300 if you look at lines three and four combined. And that's really mostly attributable to, I'm gonna get her name wrong, um, a memorial donations from several people, most of which were out of state. What was her name? Priscilla Biddle. Pr you're right, Priscilla. Um, and that's I think that's going to be the majority of the 1,300 that came through there. Uh, the other thing that's kind of big, uh, again, we're, we projected, we budgeted for a loss of $3,200 this month, and the actual loss was only $700, about $2,500 better on net income or on the net loss, lower net loss. 1300 was in the donation income, and the next biggest item was on fundraising total. Um, we had budgeted in January for the full amount of what we anticipated the prizes to be. Um, we're $600 under. We're still going to incur $329 for the Apple iPad, we, uh, iPod, app, iPad that we need to go get this weekend. Um, but about half of that amount is a timing difference. We'll be getting that in February. The other half is a net. Um, uh, we were able to negotiate great, great um, discounts from actually four different uh, local community vendors or whatever. So it's coming in lower. You're still going to see the hot, the full price of what we're paying here. So there were some checks that were given for it. Um, Matt, yours as well. That's coming through donations up above. Um, versus down below, so we're grossing up our numbers, our you know, expenses for fundraising prizes. You're going to see the gross number of what we pay and incur. And if somebody gives money, donates towards that, that's up above a donation. So those are the two largest differences, making comprising the $2,500. Um, if anybody has any questions, let me know, and I can see, you know, if I can answer it. But is the surgical table donation in the, these numbers? No, that would have been that was donated back. Was it October? <coughs> it was October. It was October yeah. or November. Because I was looking for a big number there. Right. Yeah. No. 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 Wow. Good month. Yeah, it was a good month. Now I do. I'm not quite sure why animal services expenses. You know, we budgeted for sixteen hundred, almost seventeen hundred, and it's zero. But I see we're over on, you know, what was the other one? Shelter expenses were a little over on. So I don't understand. I don't understand yet what goes into animal services expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, we did process, I, mean, I know we were current on our invoices. So, and I don't think anybody is like a month late on processing their invoices. So it's just probably a timing thing. I actually think Wendy said the animal services one was for when we sent animals to be neutered or elsewhere. Animal services is outsourcing yeah. spay neuter. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure that's what she said that meant. We can I, confirm that. Yeah, and I think there's a lot more that goes in there uh, versus just the spay neuter. Hey, Deb, did you ever get like a supplementary information PL doc from Wendy? Mm -hmm. Spay today was what she said animal services was. Okay. 
Yeah, and I think that's going to be one of several items that goes in there. Uh, and I don't know if we did spay today in, in January. What was your question? If I could get a complimentary what? No, no, um, Wendy had sent me. I wasn't sure if everyone got it. It's called a supplementary information P&L doc. So, for instance, it says under expenses, animal service expenses specifically covers adoption, refunds, special foods, veterinary fees, prescriptions, medication. Prescriptions, medication. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't. If you have that, that would be great. In fact, we actually have, I didn't bring this up, but... We have a grant that um, Scott is working on right now, drafting, and needed some information from the budget. And that's exactly the level of detail. I'll just send it to the board. Okay, excellent. Thank Ellen, you. the and board. Marta. The, yeah, the board plus Marta, please. Of course. I'm sorry, Marta. I just kind of always assume you. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that's, unless you, if somebody has any questions. And if anybody wants to change, has a request to change how we're reporting anything different, not that I'll be reporting this in the future, but we're just kind of filling in right now, um, let me know. Um, so we don't have an official treasurer's report this month because of Wendy's departure um, and, the, and the current lack of a treasurer. Um, but Deb obviously gave you all of the highlights for um, the year to date and cash flow. Yeah. I think the only other thing I can think of that we probably need to bring up is right now we're kind of in a state of flux on, on changing over the bank <laughs> account authorized signers. Um, Cheryl's going to be on it, but that uh, the meeting fell through today or the scheduled appointment to have all that happen at the bank. So we do have, um, right now, well actually all three are, but Cappy, we brought a check, manual check stock, and hoping we can get you to just sign. We need to do the postage for tomorrow and how they've been handling that is making it out to postage, dating it, signing it, and then when they go to actually pay for the postage and mail it, the postmaster has to weigh it and determine what the cost is and then they write it in. So if you don't mind, um, it's either that or we have to go get cash and give tomorrow to go down and pay for postage. We need to make it out to USPS. Right, it'll be all made out. Uh, we just have to manually make that out. It's not going to be where anybody could take it and run with it, but it's and this is the normal routine for um, paying postage because we don't know what it is until after the fact. Did Wendy mention the Vanguard account that all the paperwork was in our transition? Ready for? Yeah. yeah, no, she did not. Okay. I mean, I know that there's a folder with Vanguard in there, and I've seen them come through the mail because it, it's still showing on the on the assets as being at face at the bank of evergreen checking and that should be at vanguard if that was done um oh i'm sorry you mean as far as selling out of vanguard no buying it that was the fund that fit the criteria the board wanted so the paperwork was i don't all think done, and i think you guys had all signed it the december meeting i thought the only thing we were doing was moving the uh, reserve cash into a bank account with higher interest. It wasn't the Vanguard. It was to replace the investments that were in the Yeah, bank. I don't think, hey, Matt. I don't know Matt, can you hear? Sorry, Sorry to wake you up. <laughs> She's asking though. I can only hear them if you speak very loudly and very slowly. Do you want to go ahead Do you know if the account at Vanguard got opened? No, I didn't hear that. OK, well, email. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I mean, I'm thinking, and Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm talking about the other, and I'm trying to think who it was. That was for the reserve amount, the cash amount, not for the true investments, but that's what we were going to hold back for the cash flow reserve. Yeah, we were opening the e First Bank, I think it was called. Right. Just for cash. Okay. And so that's just for cash. Yeah, that's the only one but I know about, and that's what Matt and I were signing up for. And we need to follow up with her on it at your next meeting, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about them, but we'll see. Yeah. It may have to, yeah. Um, I don't think she did it because she did tell us that the E bank that we had filled out, Matt and I filled out the paperwork for, never was open. So that's still outstanding too. That'll be on the list of the. Um, but yeah, if I can remember to ask her about that one, you might want to email me to ask her. But I, I have a feeling if the E first one wasn't done, I don't think that was ever done. Maybe you can help us get, <laughs> get that one with done. Part, yeah. yeah, that would be great. I think she would have told us if she had, because she did specifically fit the other one. She didn't get around to opening. 
Okay, I can't think of any. I mean, obviously, the big thing on finance is, um, again, having to look at how we're going to transition um, the work around and who's going to be doing it and temporarily, short term, and then long term solution. But I don't think that's, you know, I think that's something we can need to be addressing in another meeting. Thanks, Deb. Do we have any open business? Matt, do you know of any open business? Uh, I'm not sure if mine is open or new. Um, there have been some emails going around on whether or not what we, we should do with the documents that normally are presented to the board and then the board has to sign them off on their own. Um, I'm not sure if that is open or not. Uh, but if it is, I'm sure it would be something that we would Documents meaning all of our reports? Right. Well, yeah, the okay. report, you know, okay. the tech report, whatever in the, in the meeting minutes where you normally um, see attached. I don't want the shelter director report to be accessed um, by anyone in the community. Sometimes there's donor confidentiality issues. Um, that's why I specifically only hand my report to board members and not anyone else present at the meeting. How do you feel about it being in the Google Docs? So that we have access to it. Oh, that would be fine. Because I think we can share it. With sure, Google Docs is fine. And I think Anything that's what we were talking about was oh, putting. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, putting all of the, like what we have here for this meeting in Google Docs along with minutes, but only last month people were talking about maybe putting all of it on the website. And I think some of us were thinking about okay. it. And it's like, well, we think only the minutes should go on the website. I, I think it's at that level. Yeah. And if you put too much, it's just too much for them to read and misconstrue and then like you said there's as long something as it's confidential. Not yeah, sensitive information that shouldn't be shared, which is sometimes in my report. So yeah. So Should does it, anybody disagree with that? Yeah, it does it does anyone not want to put them on Google Docs? We're talking about the board meeting and it can't be confidential. I can't hear Matt. Um, Matt, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I Matt says if we're talking about it in a board meeting it can't be confidential. Right. And I'll put I'll put items in my report and I'll meeting, I, so if it was handed out or discussed in the board meeting then that's not Right. That's a good point. Yeah. That that's why we don't I don't mention donor names out loud. But sometimes they are in my written report. And you I might still think of minutes. minutes. I minutes still think adequate. the minutes are oh, yeah. they're a reflection of what happens at the board meeting. If a member wants more info, they can certainly ask for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Do it. I mean, yeah. I agree, and I think it was my communication that was misconstrued that people thought it was supposed to be with. That's not what I meant. I just meant access for the board. Okay. You're troublemaking. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I truly didn't mean that. So just because I only hear about, you know, 70%, minute, only minutes on the web, and if anyone wants their stuff published, they'll do it through Google Docs. Yes. Thank you. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Any other open business? Natalie, anything from the first store? We're having a meeting this Saturday. Excuse what time me. is your meeting on Saturday? 9.30. What time? 9.30. What time are we ending our 9.30? Um, well, I'm hoping it will only take us about an hour. Okay. So 9, but then you have a 10, so. Is it 10 or 10.30? It's 10 at 10. Okay, 9.30. And you're like 20 minutes away. I can make it for 10 minutes. <laughs> Maybe I can be first or whatever. That would be if it takes you 20, you're driving really slow. <laughs> it's about 10. Oh, is it 10 minutes from the shelter? Okay, I, had, I can spend 20 minutes there. I'm in between an 8 o'clock and a 10 o'clock. Ellen, my battery's going. going low, so you might get disconnected. Okay, that'll be fine. It's time for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, if there's no other open business, New business. Um, we want to. We want to have a committee for uh, the new building. I've seen a couple emails going around about something. Mary, um, you and I. Yes. I, yeah, I would love to tackle that. I'm. I'm excited. Marta has expressed uh, a need 
uh, for a new building within the next 18 to 24 months because she's growing it out of our current facility and whether that is renting a new facility, um, gaining land from somebody to build on, um, using an existing facility that's given to us or we use fundraising money. Um, but yeah, I think that it's time that we start the committee and I would love to tackle that. Mary and I have agreed to co-chair. Okay, cool. And I don't know if you want to, I don't know, we can work We can work through volunteer applications to see if there's any interest in something close or um, also put out the call on Pine Family 285 down. Does anybody know um, Jackie Crivello? Apparently she was a past IMHF board member and she was on the board for about five years but I'm not sure the time frame of when she was on the board. And she had an article in the Serenity Magazine, if anybody gets this, she's a local <laughs> photographer. Um, her website has amazing um, photos that she's taken. And by chance, I met her in Walmart yesterday in the Easter candy aisle. <laughs> and we got to chatting because I recognized her and she has a hub award, which I didn't wasn't familiar with the breed. So, I was asking her about it, and we got to chatting, and that's how I found out her connection with IMHS. And she, ironically, had tried to get a building at that time, uh. had raised forty or fifty thousand dollars through a Harley Davidson fundraiser. So we've emailed already a couple times back and forth, but we're going to chat this weekend so I can pick her brain about what she's done in the past, what worked, what didn't, what avenues, what people to talk to. Um, so hopefully that'll be helpful. Cool. Good, good stuff. We have heard about the Harley. It was a raffle, I understand. <laughs> but whoever did it had, um, uh, they had, they were on the circuit, so they were able to take the Harley everywhere with them to show, and that really helped pull in the money. Yeah, um, that huge. That, that's a huge risk to try to buy something like that right. and then raffle it off. Right. But right. Um, no, that's great. And Marta and I, and hopefully JJ, are going to try to visit Foothills Animal Shelter because their facility is incredible. Also, try to gain some knowledge of you know what route and avenues um, they took and anything that can be helpful from that. Good. Is Great. that the money that's in that restricted fund? I'm not yes. sure because I thought that was stock. There money. is a building fund. I thought there was like twenty six thousand dollars. That's the number I was familiar with. Yeah, but wasn't that stock that was donated to us by one donor? I don't think that's from this raffle. Could be wrong, but my understanding was that was the Exxon stock or whatever the gas was. We had that for several years. And I think that was donated, one one gift, one donation of several shares of stock. So I don't think that would be the um, raffle, but I could be wrong. Right. Doesn't the make raffle sense money doesn't appear to have been directed to the building fund. Yeah, I know. That's right. what it kind of sounds like. I don't know where the money came from, but there's a, a particular donor that I'm thinking of that I thought gave five or $10,000 towards a building. We can You're check. Um, I it doesn't actually matter. Yes. Yeah, I, I could check the restricted. I mean, that's hopefully okay. on the list of what we're going to talk to okay. next Thursday. I've, but I've I, seen it in our documentation in the last year. So. Huh. Okay. There might be a second one that came through besides mm -hmm. the stock. I'll have to check on that one. The only other new business, um, obviously, we need a treasurer, and we still need a secretary. Is there anything I can do to help? Can I, can I send an email blast background. to volunteers? Yeah, sorry. That one I'm not doing. <laughs> I thought I had a perfect fit. I asked a friend that's the treasurer and um, volunteers at Foothill, and it just wasn't a good time for her. I'll keep my ears open and okay. get the word out. Yeah, no, we didn't have a treasurer for a couple of years, I think prior, probably two years ago, for two years. I don't think that's a good idea, but I think that until we find somebody, um, you know, I don't know that we're going to have a choice on that. If the there treasurer. are specific duties that we would like to find someone to take on, and you want me to send out an email blast to our volunteer pool, I'd be happy to do that. But couldn't so. we put that on our want list every time we put it out? Need someone with an accounting background? Yeah, I just need or specifically. Yeah, I think. Instead of just items. Um, If there are specific duties and if there's like an estimated weekly or monthly time commitment, that would probably be good. So we'll probably know more a little bit more after our meeting okay. maybe next week. Okay. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Okay. Any other new business? Well what about a secretary? Does any have we talked through a secretary? Is anybody interested in a secretary on the board? I thought Mary had said she might be interested at one point. <laughs> <laughs> As my 
computer is running low on battery power, but yeah, I, don't, I could certainly do that. I'd be happy to. Cool. So we have great some, if wow. we can fill one or two. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you don't ask, uh, you don't get. Nomination? Yeah, I was going to say, don't we need to do make a formal movement? <laughs> hey, Matt, Mary's offered up to be secretary. Do we need to nominate her? Yeah, somebody needs to nominate her, and then you guys can vote on it. I move we elect Mary as secretary. I, I second. second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mary. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. You're a trooper, Mary. <laughs> and you actually need to document who, who. That everybody said Dave, I didn't no, appear. Well, Dave, Dave, Dave made the Dave motion. Made the motion. <clears throat> Cheryl seconded it before okay. I did. Thank you. So. Other okay. I just want everybody to know that I'm a notary in the state of Colorado. If you need anything notarized, just give me a day notice before the meeting and I'll be glad to bring my stamp or whatever. Or you can arrange something individually. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. If there's nothing else, I call this meeting to a close at 7.48 p.m. Thanks, everyone.